What's up, everybody? That's a pretty cool, cool run right there. You can go from here, up a whole step. And you got the C shape right here, up a whole step. And then you can do like this A minor shape, but take the root out. And you could even take the, uh, the fifth out. It's a little more jazzy. And then you got this same thing right here. Yeah. I'm just going to mess around for a little bit and then see if there's anything worth talking about. I mean, that's like a, if you're in your beginning phases, just with your pentatonic, uh, you can skip the third note, this one, and just go straight to the fourth one. this right here so if you know your major chords like just a regular major bar chord and then maybe you figured out like that this you also have this shape or that bar chord and then maybe you figured out this major seven voicing but the one I figured out after all those ones is like this So you skip the fifth string, that one's muted, but it's sort of just like you're playing like a regular G chord, but then you take away your pinky and then bar the first finger. And what's cool about this voicing is if you take out the root note and you just do this, but you have a bass player filling in that A for you it frees up your pinky and your third finger to do those trills and pull-offs in the context of A. That's another major seven, just if you're using the top four strings. You just do find the octave from the lowest string. And then you have this easy, just three bar all the way down, right? Which is just a takeoff of a D major seven, like open chord. You just move it up. So that's an E major seven. I never really play that. Uh, pretty cool. You just go. See, it's like, it's funny because you end up learning like a full chord voicing, like this is a full E major seven right here. And because you know all, it sounds good all the way, you wanna play it all the way, but really, sometimes all you need is just the top. But it's important to know the full shape because then it can create that picture in your mind because this also looks like a, a minor chord, 
right? What would that be? So it's like this D minor right here. And you have this. So if that's D, then via A flat minor, but it's also the same as an E major. You start connecting these dots and then like the, some of the theory stuff starts making more sense just by seeing the shapes being like, okay, well these three notes make the top part of an A flat minor, but they also make the top part of an E major seven. That's what I was doing earlier. That was like a big thing that I figured out that like shortened the fretboard for me. Cause it's, if you, if you learn all five positions of the pentatonic scale, That's a lot of information, it's a lot of notes, but it's good to be able to see the, the pathway all the way down the neck, and it's good to, to know that, but you can shorten like your concept of the whole thing in terms of like, take these four notes, all right? That's like right in the middle of the first position pentatonic. We're gonna just live right here. There's a lot that can be said right here. Um, okay, so this shape right here exists right here. So that means like everything relative to this we're going up. Because that's part of that shape, right? And then you start to realize we got one more up here. And then whatever you can say in this box should be able to say it here. One thing that I do when I'm playing on the higher E string, it tends to be flat or I don't know, just, I always have to like pinch into it. Whenever I'm playing, like whether it's this guitar or one of my strats in standard tuning, I could play. I get to hear I'm kind of pushing up on that E string I think it just has to do with how guitars are tuned or whatever you kind of need to push up into it it's way different than you gotta hit it with throw some vibrato in there and then your approach, you know? All I did was, but I slide into it, and throw a little bend in there, and that bend kind of wants you to get that tension, it gives you that tension to want to release.
So right there, that just kind of like uh, tackles this much of the fretboard. You're only dealing with four notes at a time, but let's say you do make a maneuver and, and go, you know, up a whole step from there. Well, this is just, you know, your home base. All right, so that just gave us all this. And then that other square, because of the tuning, we got to slide over just a half step. All right, what was that move that I just did? This is like, this is the technique that I probably overuse, but it's just so fun. And uh, I don't know, I just like how it feels. and I like how it sounds. What it is, is um, you're, you're sliding up a half step and back almost as fast as you can. almost hard for me not to do the whole thing but then once you get back then you pull off so you could also like hammer on into that slide up pull off yeah so it does start with a hammer on slide up slide back pull off and then you got to go somewhere and do it again And then like the next level of it, I like to bend before I do the. So you're like bending up almost to that note and then slide in, slide out. to do that is uh this is like would be considered like the six um all right so go uh so i'm not even playing with the pick right now where's my pick this one um Okay, another technique I like to use is like, you call it like a rake or a sweep. It's like you're brushing across the notes um, and then choking them out like just as staccato as you can. And then that's like a fun technique to lead into. Okay, so this is like a lick I've been um, loving. So it's like you hit this note and then grab this one and bend up into it. <laughs> I think the way I do, like to do it is, uh, I guess it just depends where it's on the fretboard. You can do it either way with your pinky or your third finger. So if I went, I'm here, same thing up here, same thing right here. There's only so many notes and then they just start repeating. Um, okay, so then they, you know, that's not a, all of them. There's, you got, and then you got. So the only thing that's weird about the guitar is just between the G string and the B string, like everything else is symmetrical, but once you get to the B string, it's off by a half step. So you just have to learn to account for that instead of getting to go right under it like this. When you get here, you gotta slide over one, but still the same thing. All right, so then this right here is the same as this right here. This is right here. And then this is where, this is as high as it goes. D is your last note. So now we have all these.
but yeah so any my whatever adjustment a half step a whole step a minor third away a major third away whatever you make from that box you can say that anywhere on the fretboard and so then like the whole thing just gets a lot smaller um, or at least for me that's like when it got a lot more compressed if you will um, and you can just see like okay I'm playing this right here well you only need to go over this much and then that same those same notes have to exist somewhere right here somewhere right here within the five positions of the pentatonic like that's basically like you got five different zones where you have to work out the fingering um, because your hands aren't necessarily going to do you know exactly what you want them to do um, when you're entering like a new position you know the idea is you kind of live with one and that's what I did for probably way too long like I've got this first position pentatonic down and now like the mission is more like this one up here I'm trying to make these other positions more natural And having like, just being able to recognize these four notes across, that's already done that because I, I know to get down to here, I have to go over one. Because I've been working that. So from here, you always have another option. You can go this way or you can go this way. And then this is, That's a nice zone where you can pick up some speed. And instead of playing it all at note for note, skip this one. So that's like definitely something um, that gives your sound a little more variety is, is skipping a note in the scale. Like you might be taking it um, from the beginning, regular, oops, and then skip that last one, or maybe you skip the first one, or you're not skipping the first one, but you're skipping early, and then you can ride it regular. Or you can, just before you hit that second to last note, skip one. So yeah, that, I mean, it expands the real estate. So it's like, it kinda, it's almost like you can learn to say something right here, but then to really understand it, you gotta be able to say it everywhere. Next up on the list, okay, so as far as fundamentals are concerned, like if we could just break it into two spots, we got your pentatonic scale and then you got your major scale. Right, so that's just something to know. All right, so we're gonna move it to the key of C. All right, so if you could play it right here like this, there's other places to play it, right? Just like the other idea. Um, memorizing that is probably just as important. I can't say that I have the major scale memorized like that everywhere, but um, 
I know where I like to play if we're in like a major key, you know, because the major scale is as a square as it gets, but the importance of it is that's like the way you can break down music theory, right? So we're gonna spread this major scale uh, horizontally. All right, so if we got it like that, each one of these notes has a chord voicing, a chord value, a chord quality um, assigned to it, meaning like it's either gonna be major, minor, dominant, um, diminished, that's half diminished. Um, that's what the quality of the chord means. So it goes like this, it goes, first chord is major, the next two are minor. So if, if you forgot what we're doing is we're going up the major scale. And each one of these has a chord quality. I guess I'll just play it through. All right, so what that is, is major, minor, minor, major, dominant. I think I just played a major too, but dominant, minor, also, I guess to keep it simple, dominant is major. So it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. This could be considered minor, but you play a half diminished chord and it gives you that tension right before you get back to one. And then what's cool is, you know, I played these specific voicings, but there's this C major. It's like a C major nine. You got this D minor, a D minor nine. We can just do the regular E minor that we played, E minor seven. Um, you could go F major nine. You could do an F major like this. All right, this one, we could play it like this, suspended. And then for minor, So this right right here being seven, the seventh degree, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, also exists right here. So that becomes an easy interval to find is the seven. When when I started out, I was thinking of counting it up seven, but you can just go back one. That's your seven chord right there. There's ways to like make all this stuff seem a lot smaller than it really is. Or smaller like it actually is. Um, okay, so then you can fill in in between. You got a diminished. So we just made it all the way up playing a chord with each chromatic step that we took. The only thing that we did that we added now is this diminished chord. And then a minor chord. I just played another minor chord for the next half step. Because this is this nice little zone between three and two. There's a lot of songs that just go back and forth between those two chords. This is home. This so music's like a journey, right? It's like a story. So this is like almost how you can make sense of this as a musician. Your one chord is home. It's a comfortable place to be. So is the four chord. It's not home, but it's comfortable. You can live there. This is kind of wanting to push you somewhere. This feels close to home, but you're not home yet. This is a five chord right here. That's pushing you home, like you're about to jump off to land home. 
So that's like, you know, tension and release in music. Here you go. I'm not home yet. <laughs> Anyways, this is like a big breakthrough for me because I had no idea that with the major scale, there's chords that are associated with each interval, each note. Once you figure that out, then you start seeing how songs exist inside this stuff. And then you can start hearing it. And you know, if, if you expose yourself to it a lot and you're talking with other musicians on this um, language of, you know, four, three, two, five. You can start to hear, you hear the songs and you can think four, three, two, five. We're at two. Okay, well, instead of going to five, let's go back up to three. Make that three like a uh, dominant alter chord. All right, we're gonna go six. I thought six was up here, well, yeah same thing this note is right there that's a minor chord so then you can take this whole theory and move it up a whole step or D minor two three four five <laughs> And so for each one of these notes, you start to learn like different voicings, like these all work. Like I'm playing all of that just on five. One. So then you see guitar players like jumping around. And, but really it's just, these are both the same, doing the same thing. We're just home right now on the one chord. A cool move from here. Well, what is that? Because I thought seven was right here and six was right here. So what's this? That's what you call flat seven. that movement, you know, from a D down a whole step to a C. And, well, where can we go from here? Well, if you know the number system, or next level of this whole thing all right so now we're in the we're playing B we'll even say B major um, but as far as the pentatonic stuff is concerned it's still right here so this is our first position now we have this box See, here I am having to work it out. <laughs> All right. When I'm actually playing, when you're in the moment, you can you can feel your way. You can you can hear the where you're supposed to go by a half step or a whole step or a minor third or a major third, and that's it. That's really all there is to it. Um. Anyways, here we are. This is the next level of this. All right. So if you can go, there's our box, right? I can say that there, I can say that there. I can say it right there. Okay, so from these two, this right here is the minor third, so 
what is the minor third? It's the it's the note. The third is the note that's going to define this if, if feeling major or minor. So if you move it up a half step, that's major. You take it away, that's minor. So mixing major and minor pentatonic gives you that bluesy sound, but with a little more happy twist to it to kind of generalize, I guess. But yeah, it sounds just a little more bright and happy. So all you're doing is just adding this one note, right? And, and to throw some style on it, hammering from the minor third to the major third is gonna give it that sauce instead of just playing it straight, right? Okay, so this just exists right here in these four notes. So if you can do that, you got that. So you're learning like whatever I can say in this box, let's go back to A minor since that's where we were. All right, so that's how I, this is how I do it. A minor chord, I bar these four strings and then I put my thumb over the top and then this gets muted, which for A it doesn't need to because that is an A, but if I'm playing here, I do want it muted. Anyways. So if that's minor and you just gotta hammer on to the, make it a major third. That's how I have that. And I like to be able to do this because it's easier to choke the notes out. I mean, you could do it like this. Just depends, but. So again, it's all about approach, sliding in, and throwing that vibrato on there. Certain notes, you don't want them to ring out too long. Some of them you do. All right, one more last thing that I learned that's kind of cool. So if you use, if you're doing like this minor seven voicing, take away your third finger. This is something I play around with all the time. Like if we're in A minor. But I didn't realize, so you can use this note as kind of your guide, as the pentatonic. All of these notes, you can take this with you. It gives it kind of a crazy, crazy jazzy sound. But that, you have that as an option, and then to take that a step further, you can drop this a half step, you can drop it a whole step. And it, it does this thing where it takes your ear on this ride of, again, tension, but there, the harmonies feel so close, so your ear wants something to happen. It's kind of a wild stretch, it's easier if you use your third finger. clean one. Thank you.
Hmm. All right. I think I got to call that good. Thanks for tuning in.